Our guest this week brought inspiration, especially to the new generation. At the age of 24, she is now an attache for Economic Affairs and Development Corporation for German Embassy in Hanoi, Vietnam. In 2020, she is a beneficiary of the Forbes 30 Under 30. She is also the founder of Diplomats in Color, the first and the largest diversity network and inclusion with the federal government. Our guest this week is Tiaji. See you. Before we will proceed to the main interview, I would like to remind our viewers to click on the subscribe button and the bell button so you'll get a notification every time a new video is being released. This is Janet Jordi at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world. Welcome to the show. Our guest this week is Tiaji. See you. Welcome to the show. Yeah, so we have known you, some of your accomplishment. Can you give us more of about yourself? Um, yes, yeah, sure. So um, my name is Tiaji. Um, I currently work at the German Embassy in Vietnam. Um, but I think um, my uh, most notable accomplishment uh, so far is the um, founding of the network Diplomats of Color in the Federal Foreign Office. Um, and this is the first and largest diversity initiative. And we are currently even um, expanding to other federal ministries um, and kind of building an interministerial diversity network, which is called Diversity. So I'm very happy that um, the Promise of Color was so successful and we can now really scale up and expand our network um, to other fields outside of diplomacy. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm very excited about that. I am so proud to have you in our show, Tiaji. So you are an attaché for Economic Affairs and Development Corporation. How long have you been an attaché? I started um, working in the Federal Foreign Office in 2015. I started my three-year dual training program right after high school. And then since 2018, I've been working for the Federal Foreign Office in different positions. I've been working in the protocol department in Berlin, added two secondments to the German embassies in Senegal and in Mozambique. And now since um, August of last year, um, I've been posted to the German embassy in Vietnam. Okay, so you are in Hanoi, Vietnam for more than a year. And uh, for sure you have encountered some challenges. So I want you to share with the viewers, what are your challenges as far as the language, the food and the culture? Well, so far I've been really enjoying my time here in Vietnam. It's a very um, open-minded um, place, I would say. Um, and I think what, what always um, surprises me a little bit, uh, wherever I am, no matter what, uh, if it's Vietnam or another place in the world, um, whenever I go to an event, um, on behalf of the German embassy, um, a lot of people are surprised when they see me, um, a young black uh, woman um, representing Germany. So I think this is something that is still a little bit of a challenge, but something I am very passionate about kind of changing the narrative of who should represent Germany because we are actually a very diverse society. So I would say that should also be represented in our official representatives. And that's also kind of the link to Diplomats of Color. We really want to show that it's possible to um, be a representative of our country, even though you might not kind of fulfill that uh, stereotypical um, image of what a German diplomat should look like. You have a very good foundation because at an early age, you have a lot of accomplishment. And I would say if you're comfortable sharing with me about your parents and siblings, how many are you in the family? Uh, yes, so um, uh, my mom and dad uh, definitely played um, a big part in, um, in my values and my work ethic, um, just to give you some more information about my family. So my father is originally from Liberia um, and um, he actually, he was in Liberia during the war 
So he went to Ghana to pursue his university studies there. And my mother's actually from uh, Germany and she grew up in the GDR in East Germany. Um, and she also went to Ghana to do um, an exchange here. So that's where my parents met. So I would say from early on, I've been exposed to different cultures, different languages, and this notion that no is key. And when you work hard, you can achieve um, your aspirations. So I think my parents definitely played a huge part in that. Um, and I also have two older brothers um, and they currently live in the US. Yeah, your exposure to different culture really helped you with what you are doing right now for the German embassy. You graduated in 2018 and you began your employment immediately with the German Foreign Services. And I think you've been to Berlin, Dakar and other places. Can you share your journey about this? Yes, yeah, sure. So. Um, after so during um, during my studies, it's kind of a part of the program to do an internship. So mm -hmm. actually, kind of my first first exposure, um, international exposure was in Shanghai in China. I did um, an eight month internship at the consulate general there, and then after graduation, I started working in the protocol department, where I was responsible for organizing and conducting the official trips and visits of the federal president, the chancellor, and the foreign minister. So that was a very exciting um, opportunity for me because um, I got to experience um, different countries as well as working with different stakeholders um, from different countries, but also within uh, Germany. So that was a very exciting opportunity. And then during that time, during those two years, um, I got the opportunity to do two secondments, which are kind of short-term um, placements to, um, to embassies abroad. So in uh, Senegal, I worked there for two months and um, as the head of the legal and consular department, um, which was also kind of my first exposure to a leadership position. And in Mozambique, I worked um, kind of at the um, intersection of cultural affairs, um, economic um, cooperation, and also a little bit of legal affairs. So um, also that was a, a completely new context again. And um, and yeah, and then, yeah, since last year I've been here in Vietnam, um, working both in the departments for economic affairs and development cooperation. So um, I think uh, it's really exciting to kind of have this exposure to different um, types of work, different settings. And, and different cultures. Yeah, your experience in Vietnam and being a attaché is very impressive. My, my other question is, why pick diplomatic position or services and what are you passionate about? I think uh, my interest for politics and diplomacy really started back in high school. Um, and um, back in high school, I was involved in the European Youth Parliament and Model United Nations conferences. And this really sparked my interest in actually pursuing a career where, can I, where I can kind of take this simulation to the real world. And um, so, yeah, and that's why I applied to the Foreign Service and I was lucky enough to be selected. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. For me, I consider you, Tiaji, as a role model because in 2019, you founded Diplomats in Color, the first and the largest diversity and inclusion within the federal government. Elaborate this journey and what prodded you to create such network. Um, I would start with my upbringing. So I was raised in Frankfurt, uh, which is a very diverse and a large international city um, in the middle of Germany. Um, so for me, it was normal that at my high school, for example, there were people from all over the world. Um, there were over, I think, 80 um, different languages spoken by the students at my high school. So um, for me, it was just um, normal to be surrounded by different cultures, different languages. And so when I arrived at the Foreign Service, I was a little bit surprised that all of a sudden, um, my environment was more homogenous and the farther I looked up the hierarchy, 
um, the more um, I saw that people who looked like me weren't represented. So that's why in 2019, um, a few people, including me, kind of gathered together. We wanted to network and kind of find like-minded people, um, share our experiences. So initially we just started to meet for lunch every couple of weeks, but we quickly realized that um, having the diverse reality of our society represented in diplomacy is such an important issue that we kind of formalized our group and um, named ourselves diplomats of color. And um, ever since then we've been organizing different events and um, we've been talking to the political leadership of the foreign office and um, constantly growing. Now we are a network of more than 150 people. Um, since um, I think a few weeks ago, uh, we founded the, our sister network, Diplomats of Color and Allies to really um, stress that it's important that everybody, no matter what you look like, where you come from, kind of gets involved in promoting this idea that diversity is such an important issue in diplomacy. And, um, and yeah, and I hope that this uh, journey continues. Yeah, you, I salute you for creating this network, this group, because of your experience with your friends. In 2020, you were, you were picked as one of the Forbes 30 under 30. Can you give us two reasons that you feel you deserve this award? Well, first of all, it's a huge honor to be listed on the Forbes 30 under 30 list. And I didn't expect this at all. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a huge honor for me. And I think the reason I was nominated really shows um, kind of the mood of our society at the moment. And it shows that a lot of people support the idea that we should really kind of kind of overcome the divisions we currently see um, both on a political level but also on a societal level and um, and yeah and I think that this accomplishment is not only for me personally but kind of represents an accomplishment for our, our entire team um, yeah yeah in 2015, you are a beneficiary, you are an international recipient of the Zonta Young Women in Public Affairs. Give us two reasons why you think you deserve the award. Well, back in high school, I was very involved in promoting gender equality and women's rights. And kind of my interest in these issues kind of started um, back in eighth grade when I participated in a student exchange to India. And that was actually my first time in a country in the global south. And I had an amazing um, exchange student and, um, but my trip to India really opened my eyes that the reality that I grew up in is not the reality for everybody on earth. And so it was really, it really became a passion to promote global justice and especially um, gender equality. Um, and from there, it kind of started that I got involved more in the European Youth Parliament. For example, I participated um, as a youth observer to the Commission on the Status of Women in New York um, and uh, different other endeavors. So I think um, the Zanta um, Young Women in Public Affairs Award kind of represents this commitment to promote women's and girls' rights. Thank you very much, Diadu. With your activities that you have mentioned before, do you consider to be a feminist and what is feminism to you? Yes, I would definitely consider myself a feminist. I think everyone, including men and all genders should be feminist because um, feminism to me means um, being um, for equality, being for equity and this doesn't only include women, but all genders. Um, and I would say that if we as a society understand that if all genders, particularly women are equal, then that benefits our society as a whole. Um, 
so I think that was really the essence of feminism and and I hope that yeah this topic will be um will be mainstream more will be kind of will become a fundamental part of our policies of our politics of our society yeah I consider you to be a remarkable leader what are the two main characteristic two main characteristics to be one Wow, that's a tough question and thank you so much um, for this uh, for this compliment um, I would say um, what makes a leader I would say to lead with example and to kind of um, kind of show show the path it's not really about kind of it's not really about uh, um, being a boss or to tell other people what to do but but to do things yourself. Um, and that's what I always try to do. Um, and I try to, um, in our team, whenever there's a new idea, we try to discuss it as a team instead of, um, instead of doing the things just one person wants. And I think that's really what enriches our team, that we can learn from each other and include all different kinds of perspectives And I think an effective leader really sees that potential in every single member of the team. That's why you are a remarkable leader, Tiaji. So you are a woman with a very strong confidence. How do you develop to be one? Um, that's also a good question. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, well, there are multiple parts, um, multiple aspects that include building confidence. I would say... Um, on an academic level or on a professional level, I would say um, know your subject. It's very important to kind of back up your demands or back up your ideas with facts, with data. Um, and um, so for me, that's, that's essential um, on kind of a thematic level. Then also I would say building confidence also comes from your surroundings, from your friends and family and kind of having a supportive environment. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I consider you young. You're only 24 years old and you are an attache for German embassy and you are a woman of color. I understand there, there are challenges and roadblocks along the way. How do you overcome those challenges and roadblocks? I would say it really depends on the nature of the challenge. Um, I would say when it comes to uh, discrimination based on race or gender, I would say for me personally, it's very important to um, have, for example, diplomats of color, a group of like-minded people, and I know that they have my back and that they kind of really understand where I'm coming from and they really understand my perspective. So that's really important for me to talk to them. Um, recently, for example, we've received two official inquiries from the German parliament, which, were, which had a racist undertone. So for me, that was kind of the first real challenge. And um, it really helped me to, to have a group of like-minded people to, to discuss this and to really talk about um, this and how we should Um, deal with uh, uh, with such negativity um, and uh, yeah and so far it's been working so uh, yeah <laughs> you are a very busy woman and I know you've been invited by a lot of businesses by a lot of schools by a lot of TV networks and magazine and in fact our interview is supposed to be at seven o'clock and then we move it to two o'clock because you have a different uh, interview So what do you do to give yourself a break? What are your hobbies? Do you cook? Do you garden? Do you read? Do you do yoga? So yes, uh, my schedule is quite busy because um, the Diplomats of Color Network is also my volunteer position and I do have a full-time job at the embassy. So um, this can be quite challenging, but I do consider it essential to take some time off just for myself to read, to listen to podcasts, to... Um, do sports. Actually, in Vietnam, I started doing kickboxing. So um, I think this is quite effective to have like a scheduled time 
for you um, that you block just for yourself. That, that's good because I love kickboxing. So who do you consider to be your inspiration to be who you are today? I think there are quite a few, especially women that I look up to. I would say one of my first role models is the former president of Liberia, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. Um, I met her in 2015 and um, it was such an inspirational meeting because she's the first female um, president of an African country. And she's um, from Liberia, which is where my father is from. So um, that was quite um, impressive for me. Um, and also, I really like her quote, um, which still resonates with me to this day, which states, if your dreams do not scare you, you're not, they're not big enough. Um, and this really made me th dream bigger and think bigger and kind of aspire to achieve things which I would have never thought to be possible. I love talking to you, Chiaji. I don't want this to stop, but I, I would ask from you inspirational thoughts and based on your experience, or you want to give a message to our viewers? Oh, that's a tough question. I, I think there are so many um, important messages, but I would say, especially for young girls and women, that they should not, um, should not, uh, let themselves be stopped by societal limits. Um, I think, especially now, it's a time of change, a time of transformation. We're living in amidst a global pandemic, and we've seen that within a short time, our entire lives have been kind of changed. And I think this really shows that change is possible for the better, even. Um, and and I think that we should really use that momentum and kind of create. Um, create new networks, create um, initiatives, businesses, um, you name it. Um, and I think um, that a lot of times, especially girls and women, feel that uh, there are limits to, to what they can achieve. Um, so, um, so I would say that, that it now is our time to overcome these limits. Yeah. Nice interview with you, Chiaji. And it is Global Inspiration's honor to have you today. Again, this is Jeanette Jordi at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen, need to be heard, and be an inspiration to the world.